Okay, thank you, Mariuka. And good morning, everyone. It's, it's super nice to be here. It's nice that you're all here. And it's nice weather. Let's make this, this a good day. Um, uh, uh, in the, uh, at, at first, I'll tell something about myself. So, um, my background is digital. So, uh, I have done some digital development in our IT organization in Kesko uh, with Mariukka, without Mariukka. And, um, and I actually asked my, my daughter that what digital is for her. She was then 16. And she told me digital is a prefix for older people to understand the difference between new ways of working and old ways of working. So, so that's my background, digital. But the context in this speech, uh, it's related to the project Marika mentioned. Uh, Kesko moved to Satamakatu 3 in Katajanokka, Helsinki in 1940. That was the previous uh, head office of Kesko. And now we're moving into Kalasatama head office during this summer. And I've had a privilege to be one of the pilots. So I'm, I am there already, but the first main moving wave is starting next Monday. And uh, there's going to be approximately 1,800 of us. And um, maybe 2,000 in some day. We're moving from nine locations to one, even though there's going to be still uh, about three is going to stay. Um, it's 35,000 square meters. It's pretty big. It's beautiful. It's white and wooden. Um, and it's a significant cultural change for us because uh, still some of us are working in, in our own rooms, doors closed, curtains down. And no, now we have the, the open office. We don't, uh, mostly we don't have our own working spots where to go. So it's a huge change. And then uh, the project has been interesting. It has been a construction project without a main contractor. So we have had lots of, I don't even, uh, I, I can't even guess how many contractors and subcontractors we have had, but super many. But luckily we haven't had, uh, had the, the well, luckily we have had Hartela taking care of the main uh, project management with these contractors and all the communication with them. But Kesk team has been the main player uh, and main actor to take care of the selections related to architectural, technological, and everything between. So it has been interesting. So this is the team of ours. We have had 14 different specialist teams, and under them we have had dozens of project teams taking care of different tasks mentioned here. And and does, uh, hundreds of Kesko people have been involved in this project. And how did we make this all happen in the schedule was the project lead. There was a huge trust between the project lead and between the teams. So that, that, that has been great. And that had, have, has been wonderful to be part of. And what did we achieve? An event center. It's not only a main office, it's an event center for up to 1,000 people, visitors. And it's a walking, uh, working area for not only for Kesko people, but for, for our visitors, for our partners. So it's very open space. We also, because we're a big player in grocery trade, technical trade, also in car trade in Finland, and in Europe also, 
So we, we want to show that in our head office. So in the first floor, we have a demonstration kitchen. We have the product development kitchen. So everybody who's coming into our head office can go and see how we are doing the product development, our grocery product development. Then we have the media kitchen. So a kitchen where we are shooting our daily or work daily uh, program, what are we going to eat today? Then we have still a photography studio. We have a product analysis laboratory. It's very high fi high fi it's, it's beautiful place for them who are working there. And of course, we, are we have a showroom for uh, building and technical trade. But they have pretty, like, they're selling pretty big things, so we, we can't get them all into Kalasatama, like Helsinki city area. Then we have uh, dedicated working areas for sample product management. So we get, you can, ima can imagine how many products, sample products we are getting every day. Because we just have to... Everybody wants us to see them, and we have to check them, and, and maybe take them uh, to our uh, product catalog. Then we have parking hall for our Kesco people, uh, charging stations for electric cars and hybrids. Uh, we're sharing cars and bikes, and of course we have a gym. Uh, then that was uh, what we achieved, and this is... So, uh, what I'm going to talk about today. So, there's something Marika asked me to tell you about the architecture. About a year and a half ago, I noticed that we don't have enough architecture in this building or this, in this project. So, the IT architect was missing. So, we changed that. Then, do OT people speak IT? That was actually for an IT person like me, uh, an interesting to understand or see how, how different worlds are, of OT and IT. And then the silos, when we are breaking down the silos, does it lead us to total complexity? Well, first, the, the, the OT environment and the architecture. So, so OT is operational technology. It's related to what, what, what is running the building. It's very like you can see and feel most of it. Uh, but it has been far from IT since about today. But the architecture is very, very similar. So solutions, we have to understand the overlapping technologies. Uh, we have to understand the APIs, the open APIs, and are they really open APIs, even though they are sold us as open APIs. Then, of course, the demand, the need. Documentation, is it there? Integrations between different services. And something that gives me headache is the relay integration, because it exists still. And then, then in the ground there is the data. Where to store the data, what to do with the data. That's something to understand. And this, this is the kind of all the silos you face when you're starting to build a new head office. Or you at least have to answer questions related to this. And I'm indicating with the grey colour safety and security. So this kind of silos you're buying when you're like traditionally building up a new uh, head office. And parking and electric car charging are there because in parking you have to understand who is coming in your parking hall. And electric car charging is just part of it. So <laughs> it's not, well, it's something related to safety, of course. And then the, 
maybe from the building perspective, the most important is the orange uh, silo. It's the building operation, so that how it's the heart of the building, how your building is operating, and how your how the people inside the building are doing. They are very connected. And then, the, like most surprising for me, I would say, was the luminaires, the lights. So there is lots of different luminaires. There are POE luminaires and uh, Darnalite luminaires and, and DMX luminaires and whatsoever. Facade luminaires. Curtains and audiovisuals. I group them as a whole because you can actually, it's, it, you, you could easily imagine that they are one group because from audiovisual uh, management system, you of course uh, manage curtains, lights, and so on. And then there are cleaning, waste management, recycling. They are all all their own IOTs inside, all systems, own systems, and catering services, some kind, uh, somehow related, and other random IOT stuff. So, for example, we have lots of uh, refrigerators and that kind of technology, so we have to have te uh, technology for understand the temperature and so on. So this is the, the building, or the smart building, if it's smart. And I think building is smart when, when you can use the data to make good decisions. The building or its systems may even tell you what could be the good decisions. And then we have the smart office. So these are the systems we're facing every day almost every day. So all the service deliveries, all the like cleaning, catering, and so on. Booking tools, you can book car wash, uh, meeting room, and so on. Then mail room solutions, logistics, that kind of solutions. Then we uh, have surprisingly many different digital signage uh, device. And of course we have to manage the content somewhere. And because we have uh, several uh, digital signage device out there as well, we have more than four million square meters in Finland, like Kesko uh, buildings, stores and so on. So we have to think about that. And then these HR systems, working hour monitoring, and lunch payment, for example. And then my, my favorites that are, could be in the building side, but because I put the visitor management in the building side, because you have to understand the visitor, who he or she is, so it's security. Now we'll take the environmental monitoring to the smart office solutions because we all want to have a good environment for, for our workday. So it's smart office. There, there can be uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, humidity, temperature, CO2 levels, for example. And then search. We have had lots of discussions related to search. Where do I find my, my colleague? Where to, how to find the, the free working spot, the meeting room in this big building? So search is one uh, very important thing. And, and the search has to be near us, all of us. But Something I learned from this project was, and the discussions uh, with the, the service providers that we really have had a lot, uh, open APIs and, the doc and documentation. Well, nice try, not there quite yet. 
Uh, open APIs are not really open APIs yet, or they are not documented so that you could easily uh, start using them. Uh, this doesn't. This is not about like all of the service providers, but there may be questions related to this. Then silos, challenge and accept, because uh, some of the silos are very very nice to have. Uh, you maybe want to have security related things in one silo, but it's of course nice not to have. 10 different security related silos, but only one. Well, think about it. Then, overlapping technology. Identify and decide. Because um, it, it would be nice to avoid all the overlapping technology and systems, but then, uh, from my point of view, uh, at least, uh, I would think that it may make the, the environment a bit complex because many service providers, system providers, are providing same technology, same IoT sensors, and they are maybe integrated even in their technology. Then PoE, this is interesting. So. You have to understand that PoE-related process in case of blackout. It's like electricity, like power blackout and network blackout because it has its uh, <laughs> dependencies related to that. So PoE, it's the, it gets the electric from uh, Ethernet cable, the PoE device. Then do OT people speak IT? Well, uh, I would say there is a huge gap still in between, but there is a huge possibility to change this, and, and uh, there may be a huge leap ahead uh, in OT side, because I, I actually got several comments from our service providers that nobody has never before asked those questions. Why are you asking this? And then I'm, I'm wondering that, well, if you're selling us a system and I'm asking you how does it work, what's the technology behind it, and could you tell us about the, inf uh, uh, the information security? And nobody has asked this before. It's, it, it, it's surprising. And, and then solution architecture, we have actually uh, described solution architecture for or with, or at least challenged our service providers to provide us these documents. So it has been a huge leap for all of us during this uh, process. In pro purchase process, like when you use terms related to uh, construction or IT related terms, they're totally different. And it's very common in a, in a building construction project that you use these construction terms. And then when you're wondering that what's the warranty period or what does it rain inside in this, this whatever system it is? It, it's <laughs> they, they don't meet, kind of. Okay, so a gap. And then to be discussed in this kind of project. Well, um, continuous service. It's interesting because uh, usually I've understood that when you buy things in silos in construction projects, you have the warranty, of course. Well, wouldn't you have warranty in IT project as well? But you have the warranty for this one silo, so you don't have to do anything during this two-year or five-year period. Well, 
I have understood that it's very nice to have all the versions updated, for example. So, so you have to understand the need of continuous service, if you need it. Then the on-site support. When you're buying something new, like <laughs> It may be so that there is no one in Finland that can support you. So you have to build the team. And then um, on-site servers are very common in buildings. So do you really need the on-site server inside the building so that you may be, even if you don't have network connections yet, you, you kind of can't even do anything. <laughs> but if you come to the, the building, of course, there you can code everything and update and so on. But, but cloud environment, very nice idea. Not for everything. No, not all of the service suppliers are providing cloud systems, but still, good idea. And the dependencies, actually, they are huge, huge dependencies. But uh, they are co actually coming from... Uh, and the next slide, so, so the priority number one is actually electricity, because you can't get anything working if you don't have electricity in the building. And then you need the network to get the smart building or operational technology and smart office systems running. So electricity, remember. <laughs> and the network. <laughs> so, this is a second picture. Uh, the first one was with the silos, and the color coding is the same. So, gray blocks, building blocks, are related to safety and security. Safety are those light gray boxes, and uh, security, the others, including parking. And then building... Building operations related blocks, they are the, the orange ones. There's, there is not all of the blocks, but still some of them. I have a bit opened this idea. And then the blue ones, curtains, luminaires, and more luminaires. Like lots of luminaires, remember luminaires. And when you have identified these blocks, what... what what are the blocks you're needing and what are the integrations between these blocks? And a like, good idea to integrate certain blocks. Then you also have the platforms, other IoT, IoT like random refrigerators, whatever, uh, temperature monitoring. Then you have the big data and even AI services. And actually in our smart building solutions. There is even a nice little piece of IBM Watson behind. Well, then the information security. This is the, the kind of major part of, or big part of discussions today. Uh, smart buildings and information security, how to secure these silos or blocks or so on. So, it needs a lot of discussion and it, it needs a lot of decisions. Uh, where do you store your data? Where, you have, where do you have your systems, services? Are they on-site, in cloud, whatever? And then the data privacy. But the data privacy actually was very easy task because I think it's because of EU GDPR. It, we're all very familiar with this. And then, then now when we have, have understand, understood all of the blocks and integrations and needs and demands, test. We actually had pilots, even one one year lasting pilots uh, so that we could choose very good technologies for us. But we didn't test everything. And I have noticed that if we would have tested, for example, our personal lockers, locks, 
then it would have been easier, even though we would have maybe chosen these uh, specific locks, but it would have been easier to uh, communicate with uh, other people that how do you use these locks. They are not, not like easy task. And then, then security related, all the doors, all the areas, all the, the accesses, it's a huge area to test. So, as a conclusion, don't forget the architect. Architect. I, IT architect is very nice for this. And if you find somewhere an OT architect, it might be even better. Because this is, well, luckily we have somehow OT uh, related IT architects in Kesco, so we have had lots of good discussions with them. Thank you, Petri. <laughs> yeah, and then you need some time to bend OT. So it's because of the lack of um, IT. If you come from IT, the lack of uh, IT best practices is huge. So you need time for discussions. You also need time for, to manage the complexity or the, de the dependencies inside the project. And then avoid complexity. Simple is beautiful. Yes. And then, last but not least, steal all the good ideas and use them. Thanks. <laughs>